as this congregation is the body of hold, body of one, we all should trust in God because He gives us our armor, so why not be able to trust Him? Hey. Hey. So yeah, that's my that's my 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 little preaching on the armor of God, which is a shield. That's <laughs> awesome. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, if you don't notice that, what well, like I always say, um, I'm trying to. Uh, um, get the young women because they're getting ready to we're preparing them to go out into the world and we need to have them to be able to speak against some things and renounce some things and rebuke some things and cast down some things and get the power of the word in them the power of the word not just the letter of the law but the power behind the spirit of the word yes. and you can confidently do that when you stand in amongst people and you get that confidence you understand right. so right now this is all just to build their confidence sister sylvia so when they see sister sylvia and sister sylvia gonna see them preaching five years from now ten years she said i remember when that baby was standing up in front of the church and she was saying her little speech, amen? amen? And I know I can call on Sister Stephanie to pray for me because she's a prayer warrior. I was amen. with in the church with that baby, watching that baby being developed. Amen? amen. God bless it. Amen. Give Sister Stephanie another hand. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to have her simply come on up, praise God. And give us a word. I'm always excited when Mercedes come and speak because she's just so authentic with her word whenever she speaks. So give her a hand clap as she comes. Amen. Amen. All right, all right. Glory I'm going to say, Lord, God. Come on, baby, sister. Bless the house, Every day, if you don't even notice, because it came 
Hey, the devil came to me at school one day, where I didn't even open my Bible for in the morning. A girl had bumped into me, and she knew that I did not see her. So I threw my Gatorade bottle at her. And I felt like if she got mad and she wanted to do something, she could have done something right then and there. But me, as not fighting anymore and kind of maturing, I had to go back to her and, you know, apologize and tell her that. Well, kind of lied. I didn't really apologize. I kind of lied. I just said I didn't throw a ball at her because, you know, I am on the track team. So, you know, starting that, it would have been my fault as in, you know, starting a fight this week. Which, um, currently the devil hasn't really been coming in like that. Well, a lot. He's been keeping me very anti-social, but I like it, so I'm not going to blame him. So, and it's just like, the devil has been with me all through the school year. Um, especially through my last year, 10th grade. The devil has been with me, I don't know how long. Literally, like, I didn't even care about my grades to the point where I was just thinking that, like, you know, God was just like, until I see God just blessing me with the grades, I have to, like, actually believe him. But I was just believing I'm just doing it because, and, like, currently I was doing, like, all straight Fs and it dropped my GPA. But throughout my 11th grade year, my grades have been improving. Um, the whole semester, I'm very happy. I didn't get any Fs. I did get three pluses, but only two of them. But currently, last third quarter, I had got, um, I think it was two Bs, three A's, and two Ds. Wow. For my last quarter semester of my 11th grade year to my senior, I am now at five A's and two Bs. Wow. The devil can actually use you in good ways, but it can also be bad ways too. Maybe he just do it because he wants you to be, the devil wants you to think of certain things that you're not supposed to think of. I'm not saying me, I am not suicidal. Not. But he does use that thoughts and stuff to use you. But he does make you isolate yourself. And God will eventually come in through what the devil is doing because the devil only gets approved through God. God can't, the devil can't do anything without God's approval because once once. Upon a time, the, um, the devil was once an angel, and he had to go through God's orders. He didn't have orders for himself. So he thought that either way, if he could step down and be higher of God, even as in the bad things, he still can't do any orders unless God says so. Amen. God does things for your, for your living. Either way, if you know it or not, you may not like the things that you're going through. You may have good times right now, but it's like sometime in your life, you're going to have a downfall. Whether you like it or not, you can have perfect, you can have a good financial um, credit, you can have everything you want, you can be blessed, you can be spoiled. But at one point in life, God is going to take that all the way and see how you take it. Because you was always blessed with the stuff that you wanted and that you got. And the devil's going to come in and he's going to show you. God's going to show you how to handle the stuff that he taught you when you were younger or when you was older. Wherever you're at now and trying to improve, God is going to show you. Well, he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna do something in your life that he's going to want you to show him what he taught you and what you learned in the church. Amen. The devil is technically a lesson for you. It's like he puts him through mostly your friends because you depend on your friends for most of the stuff. You really don't depend on your family because your family pushes you the hardest. Your family actually makes you do things that you don't want to do, but your friends, like, you mostly go to your friends to talk. You don't really go to your parents as much as you think when you go to your friends. And the God is going to put, devil's, the devil's going to jump through your friends and see where you're, where, 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 what you believe in, like, how how you was taught your Christianity, like what did God teach you through mm -hmm. your friends that you can actually know which is the right way and which is not. Yeah, yeah, baby. You better say it as lost. <laughs> <laughs> you're talking, you're talking good. So from what I got from this, I believe that God wants you to be strong. Yeah. 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 Y
You don't have to keep on your spiritual clothes, even though Pastor, I mean, we should say so. You don't have to keep it on at all times because you can still do what you do. You know what you're doing wrong, you know what you're doing right. But when it comes to that type of stuff that you want to down on, it's not the right thing. That's when God, like, wants you, you want, God wants you to prove to him what you have learned. So when it's time for your life to be taken, you wasn't, you wasn't spiritual all your life, but you did have that spiritual side to show him that you did learn some things sometime in your life. Thank you. And I agree, honestly, about the spiritual coat. Because what happened is, how will we know that we've been spiritually elevated if our spiritual coat doesn't come off? That's right. You understand? All right. How will we know that we've grown spiritually if we if our if we don't allow our spiritual coat to come off? All right. So, like she said, sometimes the spiritual coat don't always stay on. Amen. And I agree with her. She said some profound. Listen, yes. I I seen spiritual growth all over Amen. that baby. Amen. Amen. She said some things, and she said the devil is actually our lesson, and he can't do nothing that God don't allow him to do. She said some. See, we got to use the babies, allow them to talk and minister, and see, you know that's how you know where are they in their body state? Where are they? We keep bringing them and bringing them and bringing them and letting them sit in the pew. But what if, are we really letting them speak and say anything? What they've absorbed, what they can teach us back. They can teach the adult something. And I'm going to tell you that baby said, she, she phoned with her auntie, she scrubbed with her auntie on the phone. She's like, I'm not coming, auntie. I said, yes, you will. She said, I don't want to come, auntie. I don't want to do this. I say, look at here. You coming? What I said, Mama? I said, y'all forgive me. Y'all be about to take my spiritual coat off. I said, I will fight you in front of your mama and your daddy. You coming to church? <laughs> That's just her auntie speaking. I can say that, y'all. That's her auntie. She know her auntie don't. You know her auntie love her to death. Amen. But I, I want to see the best out of them, Amen. and I push them, Amen. and I just don't let them settle for. I don't feel like coming. Uh, it's not an option for you. Just not an option for you, especially when you, my niece or my child. Just not an option for you. All right. All right. So right now, I don't know if KK ready. Let's go see if KK ready. And this should be very, might be brief and very interesting. Praise God. But not even KK can get out of this. Amen. I say you gonna say a scripture, read a poem, do something. But this is youth night, and you must speak. If I somebody else baby had to be here, you got to be here too. Being my baby, our baby, she had to be here in my yeah, yeah. Amen. But that was wonderful. Very authentic, authentic conversation. I love because the Lord really used her, even when she can't see it. Even when she doesn't think so, the Lord really, really is using Mercedes. And I'm going to tell you all, we got to reach out as um, big sisters to our little sisters. Amen. And, you know, be an example to them. All right, so we're going to call um, our other little daughter, Nikayla, up and our little sister in Christ, Nikayla. Give her a hand clap as she comes. Don't lay next to the 
the Cairo, another young, powerful woman, little powerhouse such as um, in the house, and I know God is going to speak early through her, and she's going to bring a little awesome word. That's the other half of me, part of me, three quarters of me, and me and MT. Amen. Yeah, that's my serious side, they say. Amen. Give the sister Nakara a hand clap as she comes forward. So, 
You know, in my house, they talk about meekness all the time. Speak with meekness and act with meekness all the time. Language so I'm like, of like Jesus. what does that mean? And I'm like, okay, so I had to go look before I came up here, and I was like, okay, you submit yourself. Okay, I can do that. You submit yourself to God, okay. And then with meekness, you can have faith, and especially on your spiritual walk, if you don't want to, you know, if you want to resist the enemy and you don't want to stray away to sin, you got to have faith. That, that have faith that God has you in all things. Amen, amen. Even amen. if you think that, I, I, what's the, it's the thing in our bathroom. It's that the lady had a dream, and she was walking on the beach, and she saw all the little, little dreams and footprints in there. Yes. That. I don't know, y'all don't know that story, how many other Two sets of footprints. Yes, Okay, yes, yes. the lady thought that she was by herself in one of the, her trials and tribulations, and lo, did she know? That it was God holding her the whole time. So have faith in God that He has you through all your trials and tribulations. Amen. Amen. Okay, then we move on to love. <clears throat> you gotta have love for everybody, even if they aggravate your soul. Just love. Aggravate your soul. <laughs> you must got brothers and sisters. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta love them through everything. And not only through not only in the natural sense, but in the spiritual sense. If see if you're a spiritual person and you're talking to somebody who's maybe new to being saved and don't know what's really going on and still trying and still doing worldly things, um, you gotta love them through all they want through because they still are made in Christ and they still need to learn on their spiritual walk. So you Amen. just love them and teach them, and then that leads me into kindness. <laughs> um, I want to take tonight, for example, anything could have happened tonight, and basically, like my mom said, you're not going to let the devil come and destroy anything Amen. in the house. So you just treat those who, who want to come and attack you with kindness and love. Just be like, okay, I'm going to pray for you, and I'm going to just... You do all this stuff for people, and that's just you doing your work for God, basically. Okay? <clears throat> that's what I have for the first part of um, verse 13 of chapter 6. Okay, then we go on. And then it says, Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. And <clears throat> here I wrote that after fighting with the evil spirit and those and that around you, you will have the strength. You will, oh. Around you with the strength, you have conquer conquered spiritual victory. Amen. Mm. Amen. That's right. Amen. <laughs> okay, what I mean by spiritual victory is basically you would have earned all of your armor that I have spoken about before. Your prayer, your meekness, your faith, your love, and your kindness. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And also you have your, your, your physical armor, your shield, your sword, and it's just... You gotta talk to your girl. Come on. Come on, just at the house. You gotta talk, girl. Come on, now. Preach this word, Okay. So, before you have to prepare yourself, you have to train. Oh, Kyra! Woo! That's right. Preach, girl! That's right. My baby, girl! Go ahead, girl! Woo! Daddy, proud, baby. He's just like, proud dad. That's so, right. He's a proud father. Okay. Yeah, so you have to build up your strength and get and get ready for war with you don't know what's gonna be out there. So, you know, you have to prepare yourself. You have to read your Bible, read the scriptures that God gives you. Okay, and it doesn't matter if you just like lay in there and you just wanna resist what God's trying to give you. You have to come on. Now People at the army don't want to be climbing under the barbed wire. They be getting all cut up and stuff. That's right. That's right. And right. right. they be all in through the mud and they be going, they just going through a lot of turmoil and hard stuff they got to do. That's what we as Christians have to do to win our spiritual victory. That's so right. We yes, walk right with God and we don't stray away and we don't go with the enemy. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Now going on to um, verse 14. This is my favorite one. Okay, it says, Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body of armor of God's righteousness. Okay, so I put in specifics the belt of truth. Okay, 
Um, in the natural sense, you know, when you put on a belt, it holds up your pants, it supports you. It holds things in that perfect place that you want it to be in. But in the spiritual sense, that's what the belt, the belt of truth does. It supports us and it holds us in that perfect place in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Go, girl. Wow. Amen. Holy Ghost. So, um, wow. Okay, let's get down a little bit. All right, so, you guys know how you see young men walking around here with their pants sagging down the road because they don't want to wear a belt. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> they don't like wearing a belt. You know, sometimes, I just seen a video on social media once. And this man was running and his pants <laughs> fell down and he fell. It was funny. Our parents will fall and we will be too busy picking them up. Yeah. That, will, that will give the devil some room to step in there and he'll attack us. Because we're too busy trying to pick up after our own faults. Because our pants don't fail because they didn't want to tighten our britches. And that's our job. And now we got to pick up our pants. We're trying to run and pick up our pants. But we can't because we just don't want to be spiritual. We don't want to pray. We don't want to love. We don't want to do. We don't have weakness. So the devil just steps on right in and he just attacks us. But you know, sometimes we do the wrong thing. We lie, we exaggerate some stuff. And I know I think y'all heard this one, like you may have won the battle, but we will win the war. Yes, so if you don't tighten your spiritual belt of truth, lying and exaggerating may help you win the battle, but it will not help you win the war with the devil. Oh <laughs> it will only demolish you at war. Okay, because you're only damaging your own spiritual armor. Amen. Okay, you gotta keep it intact. You gotta do stuff that's right. Amen. Okay. Right. We are no match for the enemy, and if we do not keep the armor of God, <clears throat> we will tarnish ourselves in our armor. I'm sorry, guys. Like I said before, if we do not fasten our spiritual belts. Not even our spiritual best belts, our armors at all. Like you, the the sword, you have to keep it close to you. You have to be able to fight away and rebuke the evil spirits that are trying to attack you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In life, yes, yeah, baby. Okay, so yeah, you gotta keep everything tight on you and just okay. <laughs> so, um, in closing, I would like to say. That you need to keep your spiritual belt fastened, mm -hmm. uh, stand your ground, mm -hmm. yes. and when you stand your ground, you you pray. Mm -hmm. You don't not only just pray; you just ask God and thank God for everything that He has given you in life, because everything is not as bad as it seems. So when you have someone wow. coming towards you trying to attack you, you say, "Not today." I know that's right. <laughs> not today. Not today. Not today. Not today. Stay on my <laughs> ground. And I'm going to rebuke this spirit away from me and fight it with my spiritual armor. Not today. Let, I'm going to win. You may have won this battle, devil. But watch me. Amen. I am going to win the war. Come on. Amen. Jesus. Be firm in what you believe in, and that is the will of God. Yes. The will of God, guys, that's what you should believe in. All right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. The will to fight proudly and strongly with the armor of God. So I want you guys to take this home with you. If you guys want to remember it, it is Ephesians chapter 6, verses 13 through 14. Just remember you have your physical, your physical armor and you have your spiritual armor. Wow. And you wow. have prayer. You have meekness. You have faith, love, and you have kindness. Wow. Thank you. Yes, Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Woman of God. Yeah. Blessings to the woman of God. Yeah. Blessings to the woman of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory. Yeah. Bless out the woman. why um, your tests are harder than other tests. Because of the bloodline. You understand? 
Lord. Some of your tests God. are harder than other, other people's tests because of the bloodline. Lord. You understand? Yeah. Some of the attacks are difficult because, or even, you know, are strong because of the bloodline. You understand? Because of these Jesus. two, you understand here. Jesus. And now because of these two here, you understand, and it goes down to the babies and so on and so forth. Yes. You understand? Yes. So when you see, don't just judge people. You understand? This man and this woman have to carry a lot for these two and for the babies and so on and so forth for the bloodline. So don't be so quick to judge anything that come up against them or that they go through. Don't be so quick to judge what the man and uh, God and I and may go through. Yes. Or what the man, you know what I'm saying? Yes, the, the, daddy, the bloodline. Do you see the bloodline? Daddy and your baby girl, Cece. Mama, you see your bloodline? Amen. She brought the family into the church. You hear me? They've been sharing and hanging together. And maybe their cousins, they grew up as friends, and now they're cousins, and they just, they're growing up together as young women and encouraging one another and supporting one another. And I love that they're growing up in ministry together. Amen. Because they're going to grow up, they're going to have a dynamic ministry Amen. together. Amen. I'm telling you, I already see it, praise God. All the four of them, they might get on each other's nerves from time to time, but they love each other, I'm going to tell you. But they praise God. They grew up as friends and now they're cousins and they're like their sisters in Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah. God bless the service of my mission. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna talk for two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, six minutes. But, but what I'm gonna do while I'm talking, I need you to get your cheerful giving in.